Welcome to Watching the Horizon. I'm Jake. In another video, I talked about how a family member had come to me and uh, they were new to the whole prepping thing and uh, they knew that I was kind of into it and uh, they started asking me some questions about how they could get started and how they could get involved. And so uh, this video is sort of dedicated to them. Uh, this is going to be uh, 10 tips for beginning preppers. Tip number one is just relax, just chill. Honestly, you probably got something sent to you in an email that was forwarded a hundred times that had some sort of ghastly bit of information that you just couldn't believe, or you're on Facebook and you heard about some sort of crazy thing that was happening, or you know, some sort of headline or something like that. There's a lot of fear out there. There's a lot of fear-based information, a lot of fear-mongering. Uh, this is just for publicity. Some of it's real, but a lot of it is hyped up just to get you to act. And the action that they want you to perform is to read their article or to buy their newspaper or whatever. So the first thing is just relax. Um, the odds are nothing's going to happen tomorrow, or probably not even the next day. You've got a little bit of time. How much time do we have? I don't know, but just don't worry about the imminent threat that that you just read about, and instead uh, continue down this path, keep a calm head, and know that everything's going to be okay, you've made the right decision. So just relax. Tip two is don't buy anything big just yet. Uh, you might be sort of tempted to go out and uh, spend a lot of money uh, on some big investment purchase. Maybe you want to buy a whole bunch of guns or maybe you want to drop thousands of dollars on some food storage or something like that. Uh, just, just hold off uh, because what you think you need right now may not actually be what you need. Um, just, just mellow out. Just like the last tip. I think once you kind of get a better idea of where you're going and what you're going to need, uh, things will sort of come into a little bit better focus and then uh, you won't have the uh, the buyer's remorse of having dropped a whole lot of money on one thing when it turns out, oh, that so could have been better spent just right over here. So just, just hold off on the big purchases. I would recommend a great place to start is food and water storage. And if you can get around to it, do some fuel, like gasoline, propane, uh, coal, wood, something like that. But you know, absolute ground zero, I would say, food and water storage. Um, the food storage kind of basic principles I covered in another video. Um, if you haven't already, go watch that. But we're, we're talking real basic stuff here. Um, how you want to go about getting that food storage is up to you. There's a couple of different ways that you want to do it. But uh, you're going to need to think about how long you're going to want to prepare for, which also means you're going to need to sort of organize and decide what are the things that you're interested in preparing for, which leads me to my next uh, tip is do a threat assessment. Now, a threat assessment is sort of a fancy, fancy scientific way to don't worry about the article that you just read. Maybe you're thinking, hey, we're going to have nuclear war, but in reality, uh, the thing that's most likely going to turn your world upside down is you should be prepping for flooding or something like that. Maybe you didn't realize you were in a flood zone, you're downhill from maybe a dam or something like that, uh, and it's way past inspection or something. Um, do a threat assessment. There's tons of different ones to do them out there. Um, there's a couple that I found to be somewhat useful. Um, everybody's going to have sort of their own little take on it. I'll leave a link in the description below to a couple of that I like. 
Um, some of them are just very kind of top level and others really kind of make you roll up your sleeves and get down and gritty. Um, obviously, do what works for you, but the idea is whether you're worried about, you know, war, nuclear war, civil war, a terrorist attack, EMP, you know, race riots, you, you know, peak oil, it doesn't matter. Um, these are sort of the big scale things, and I'm not saying that they're not important, but things like job loss or a car accident, a death in the family, you know, a major illness or an injury or something like that, these are very real things that cause very real problems uh, for people. And if if you find yourself laid up or maybe you've got a family member or a friend who's really having a hard time, guess what? Having some preps available uh, could really save your butt. And you know what? You didn't need a nuclear bomb to drop to do it. Um, so do a threat assessment. Find out what the real dangers are in your area. Um, it's, it's really going to depend on a lot of factors. Geographically speaking, uh, you know, are you in like the California area? You got some, you know, wildfires, you've got drought to consider. Um, are you, you know, you've got the, the, the San Andreas fault, you know, to worry about. Are you, you know, more, you know, east? Are you down in the south? You know, all of these places, you know, tornadoes, uh, hurricanes, they all have their own kind of things to consider. Um, so a threat assessment is going to help you get focused and make a plan. Next is identify your strengths and identify your weaknesses. Now, this just isn't uh, a buzzword or lip service. Everybody really is unique when it comes to this kind of thing. Maybe you have a budget and that's a strength for you, but you don't have any outdoorsy skills or something like that. And after having done your threat assessment, you realize that having some outdoor skills is going to be really necessary for you. So a strength of, hey, you've got yourself a budget, um, so you're going to be able to afford some things, maybe afford some classes, afford some gear. Uh, now you know where to focus that energy and you know you can better yourself for it. Maybe it's the other way around for you, though. Maybe you're really outdoorsy. You love to go hunting and fishing. Uh, outside is really where you'd rather be, but you're broke. Um, so what do you do? Again, you know, identifying the strengths and the weaknesses will allow you to come up with a plan for you to address your threat assessment so that you can actually do meaningful preparations rather than just throw a bunch of money at, you know, some cool toys uh, and then in the event something actually happens, it didn't really do you any good. So identifying your strengths and weaknesses is going to be a really big deal. Next is sort of on the uh, coattails of that last one is um, identify some skills that you can learn, like actual skills. Uh, a lot of people like to buy gear, they like to buy equipment, and that's awesome. Um, it, it doesn't matter if you've got, you know, the best, coolest, shiniest rifle out there. If you don't go out and practice with that thing, then it's not really going to do you a whole lot of good if you can't hit the broadside of a barn with it. Uh, you might have lots of different methods for creating fire, but if you've never practiced doing it, especially in really horrible conditions, well, it would be a big bummer if the first time you tried to use this stuff was in the middle of the pouring rain or in the middle of winter when it really mattered and you don't have any practice under your belt. That's a really steep learning curve. So identify some skills. It might be something as easy as learning how to can. Um, maybe it could be, you know, how to chop firewood. Uh, it could be, you know, how to, you know, raise chickens or something like that. It might just be how to budget better. Uh, the financial aspect of, uh, of prepping is kind of a really big deal also, you know, getting out of debt and all that. So just identify some skills as part of your overall plan and then get on making those skills. That's really going to be helpful for you. Now, once you've got a plan in place, you might get tempted to get a little bit carried away. So I recommend in order for 
this you know prepping lifestyle that you're stepping into to be sustainable is define your budget um, set aside a certain amount of money every week every month however you want to do it but keep to that budget this is going to make sure that you don't overspend on stuff and uh, it also helps make sure that you make a point to set aside money so that if if you can just plug away at it a little bit every paycheck or you know every couple of weeks or every month this way very quickly you're going to be able to build up you know a really good store of you know food storage and you know water containers you know fuel you know as far as just getting started so make a budget stick to it um, and and right about now after you've done your threat assessment, after you've sort of made a plan, you've identified some skills, um, kind of going back to, I think it was the second tip as far as uh, uh, don't make any big purchases yet, things are going to start to become clear to you at this point as far as um, if, if you do have a little bit of money burning a hole in your pocket, uh, you're going to be able to identify a big purchase that you're going to be able to make at this point. Next is, I want you to build something. I want you to build a bug out bag. It doesn't have to be a bug out bag. It could be a get home bag. It can be just a 72 hour kit. This is going to be good because now you're going to start thinking about, you know, the five main areas of survival. You're going to be thinking about food, water, shelter, sanitation, and security and you're gonna put it in a bag this is going to help you sort of have to juggle a very limited space and you're gonna end up with something very useful in the end um, whether it's a bug out bag to get you from where you are you know away from trouble or something like that uh, you're you're gonna you're gonna find that all the things that you want aren't gonna fit in the bag uh, or if it does, it's going to be really heavy, so you're, it's going to sort of force you to make some really tough decisions. Um, or maybe a, a good get-home bag. Um, if you commute, it gets stuck in weather, or maybe something happens when you're at work or you're you know away from your family. Well, first thing you're going to want to do is get home. And if you're stranded, it's going to save your life if you're going to have... Uh, a get home bag that you're going to be able to rely on that's going to have you know tools and and food and water and all that stuff to help you survive as well as help you get home as you begin to start building uh, your preps uh, you, you may have built for yourself sort of a, a, a checklist at some point where you're just going to want to you know buy or secure maybe six months worth of food or maybe you're going to want a year's worth of food uh, or, or you're going to realize that you're going to want to get, you know, for the family, you're going to need, you know, maybe a thousand gallons of water or something like that. Um, instead of just kind of going through and being like, okay, I bought all my food and now I've bought all my water. Um, instead of doing it that way, I would actually suggest that you, you, you build your preps, not based on individual items, but rather you, you base it on a time period, if that makes sense. Secure food, water, fuel, extra ammunition, whatever it is. Get it for a week so that you've got a week of preps for all of it. And then build it up to two weeks. Build it up then to a month, and then a couple of months, and then build it up to a year, or however long you end up wanting to do it. You could have a year's worth of, you know, freeze-dried food, but like no water storage, and then if something happens, you've got all of this food, but you're going to die in three days because you don't have any water. So, instead of, you know, kind of chunking it out, you know, based on the item, prep in time periods and then grow it from there. The last tip is to just have patience with yourself. Um, when you first get started 
and you sort of dive into the world of prepping, uh, it's really easy to become overwhelmed really fast. There's so much information out there. There's so many rabbit holes that you can get lost in. Um, just be patient, keep a cool head, go back to your plan, go back to your threat assessment, and just kind of methodically work at it. And then just be patient that you're going to do right by yourself and, and you, you will make it. You will get everything that you need. You will never feel like you'll have everything that you need, but um, by having that plan and having that threat assessment and then just be patient with yourself, you're gonna be just fine. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps the uh, 10 tips for beginning preppers. Keep your eyes open.